Long exposure photography is a widely used technique with ground-based camera for creative and surprising results. A drone hovering is not as stable as a camera on a sturdy tripod. Until a few years ago, a very slow shutter speed would introduce unwanted blur and other artifacts. However, the stability of current DJI prosumer models has considerably improved. In this video, I will show you how to use long exposure with the different models for stunning results. Slow shutter speed value modify the aspect of the element in motion within a scene. To get the feel of movement in vehicles or people walking, for a silky look in waterfalls or waves, or to soften the cloud movement on a windy day. With extreme speed, it is possible to make cars or walking people disappear from a scene, which can be useful on certain occasions. We can also use the movement of the aircraft to get creative and unexpected results, as we will see later on. Three parameters interact for exposure, the aperture, the ISO value, and the shutter speed. Manual exposure is mandatory, as we want to use a specific shutter speed value. The other parameters will be adjusted to get the correct amount of luminosity. The Mavic 3 is the only current DJI model with a variable aperture. This makes things easier, as we can modify this value to fine-tune the amount of light entering the sensor. With other models, the only parameter available is ISO. Ideally, we want to use the base value of 100 for the best image quality, but the current models respond very well to higher values, and we can use up to 400 ISO without any noticeable quality loss. This leaves some room for maneuver. A shutter speed of a quarter of a second or slower generates some blur in the element in motion to make them appear as we would see them in real life. The slower the shutter speed value, the more pronounced the blurring. The still elements should remain in focus, unaffected by the blur. In the Mini 4 Pro and Air 3, the slowest shutter speed value available is 2 seconds. We can see the result of different shutter speed in these examples. There is also a simulated long exposure mode with values from 2.5 to 8 seconds for extreme results. It is obtained by taking several shorter photos that are then stacked and processed by the app. When using slow shutter speed values, the sensor collects plenty of light. The luminosity is too high to expose correctly in most situations. This is why ND filters are needed for long exposure photography. The filter requires are the same as for hyperlapses, much stronger than the one for video, as low shutter speed cannot be used for filming. The Mini 4 Pro and Air 3S have a very wide fixed aperture, gathering more light than other models. A strong ND2000 filter is required for long shutter speed in full daylight, but I suggest avoiding the central hour of a sunny day and shooting instead around sunrise or sunset for much better light conditions with softer shadows. Around sunset, an ND256 filter allows shutter speed of up to 2 seconds. During the blue hour, after sunset, lighter filters can be used. The secret to good result in long exposure photography is to choose the correct filter at a specific time of the day. Although we can use ISO values from 100 to 400 to fine tune the luminosity. If we are using the Mavic 3, the choice is simplified, as we can also modify the aperture. We generally think of drone photography as images taken from a high point of view, but the drone is not necessarily always flying. We can use it like a ground-based camera, without activating the propellers. All we need to do is find the level surface to place the aircraft on. The floor, a table, a low wall, or a bus. 
We can even use it with a tripod. When the aircraft is placed on a solid surface, we can select very long shutter speed values and take advantage of countless opportunities for great long exposure photos, especially in urban environments. Let's have a look at some long exposure images that can be taken either with a camera on a tripod or with a drone. The exposure settings for long exposure photography are similar to the one used for time lapses and hyperlapses. As in both cases, we want to create motion blur on the moving elements without affecting the rest of the image. It is possible to get stunning long exposure photos by shooting a time lapse or hyperlapse, then scrolling through frame by frame to select one or more images. We can then summon the photo file and process it. To edit all the images, I have used Luminar Neo, my favorite post processing software. You will find the info about it together with a discount coupon in the description of this video. It is an affiliate link, so I get a small commission in case of purchase, which are the channels go. You can watch my video about Luminar Neo by clicking on the link above. The aircraft movement can be used for unusual long exposure shot with unexpected results. Experiment with shutter speeds between 1 and 2 seconds by flying towards the target, forward or backward. The blurring effect is much more pronounced with a slower shutter speed and when flying at a lower altitude, closer to the ground. Another variation is to turn the camera down for a top-down shot to take photos while descending or ascending. It can be great fun. Click on this link to watch my video about how to do hyperlapses with the Mini 4 Pro. And don't forget to hit the like button if you find this video interesting. Thank you.